wasn't just driven for driven sake, she was driven for a purpose. But yeah, she was very heartbroken. To fight for her life, not just to be alive, but to live her. Diana and Deborah. Okay. Okay. And then Kelsey. In a world where life's difficulties can weigh heavy on our emotions, it's critical to highlight stories of resilience and optimism. Today, we offer you the incredible story of Katie Stubblefield, a young woman who, like many others, experienced times of despair and uncertainty. When she pushed a trigger, her life was forever changed. As we follow Katie's path, it's important to remember that life can be really difficult at times. But there is one important thing we want you to take from Katie's story. There is always hope, and there are people who care about you. In this video, we aim to raise awareness about suicide prevention, assist those who may be suffering in silence, and urge everyone to support one another during life's most difficult times. Happy Childhood. Katie Stablefield's journey begins in 1996 in Lakeland, Florida. Her life was filled with love and purpose from the moment she was born, the daughter of a devout Christian minister and a kind school teacher. Katie's youthful attitude exuded brightness and bravery, and her quick wit made her family laugh. Her house was filled with the lovely blend of Sunday songs and school children's banter. She reveled in the basic pleasures of life, from chasing butterflies to playing football. She was not only athletic, but she was also extremely intelligent, garnering medals and awards in her studies. Katie's spirit, however, was what truly distinguished her. Her character was defined by her infectious humor, friendliness, and capacity to build meaningful connections with others. She carried the virtues instilled in her by her religious parents, constantly lending a helpful hand or delivering a comforting word. Katie's family was undergoing a substantial transition as she began high school. Her life, like every masterpiece, had its shadows to navigate. Difficult high school years? Katie Stablefield's high school years were a tumultuous journey full of difficulties. It all started when her family began relocating. They moved from Lakeland, Florida to Owensboro, Kentucky during her sophomore year. They relocated again, this time to Oxford, Mississippi, just as she was settling into her new surroundings. Katie enrolled as a junior and fell in love with a classmate during this time. They started talking about marriage plans, which seemed unusual for someone so young. Katie's world began to fall apart as her senior year approached. She already had chronic gastrointestinal issues and had undergone surgery, including removal of her appendix and gallbladder. Katie's family was shocked just two months before her graduation when the school's headmaster decided not to renew their contracts and abruptly fired Alicia, Katie's mother, who had trusted him. Katie was deeply hurt by this betrayal, which exacerbated her emotional turmoil. Katie's high school experience was marred by constant relocations, health challenges, and emotionally draining events, casting a shadow over her formative years. She felt isolated as she struggled to adjust to new schools, make new friends, and leave behind loved ones. Football and other activities she used to enjoy were pushed to the sidelines. Misunderstandings and disagreements added to her burden as she navigated the ups and downs of adolescent relationships. Katie's luminous spirit gradually faded, hidden beneath the weight of her experiences, laying the groundwork for the tragic event that would forever change her life. The Tragedy Katie Stablefield's young life was forever changed by one pivotal decision. Katie, who was only 18 years old at the time, found herself in the midst of an emotional storm on March 25, 2014. She had discovered texts on her boyfriend's phone indicating his relationship with another girl. When she was confronted with this heartbreaking revelation, her world seemed to fall apart and the relationship crumbled. The breakup was excruciatingly painful, leaving Katie hurt and enraged. Katie sought solace and refuge at the home of her older brother Robert in Oxford, Mississippi. Her emotions were jumbled, and she vented her rage and frustration through frantic text messages and frantic pacing. Concerned for his sister's well-being, Robert decided to speak with their mother about her distress outside the house. Katie was alone in the bathroom at that tragic moment. 
Katie made a decision in the bathroom that would forever alter the course of her life. She reached for Robert's hunting rifle, her emotions driving her to do so. The gun's barrel was placed beneath her chin, and she pulled the trigger in agony. Outside, Robert, who was already dealing with grief, heard the gunshot. He dashed inside, panicking about what had just happened. As he kicked open the locked bathroom door, he saw something that would haunt him for the rest of his life. Katie, his beloved little sister, lay before him, covered in blood, and the irreversible consequences of that fateful moment had permanently altered her face. Surreal, haunting, and incomprehensible was the scene. Robert was thrown into a tumultuous whirlwind of shock, horror, and desperate need. As the gravity of the situation weighed on him, he acted instinctively, dialing for assistance, hoping against hope that there was still time to save his sister. The tragic news of this event spread throughout their community, leaving neighbors, friends, and acquaintances in shock and deep sorrow. They struggled to reconcile the vivacious and radiant Katie they knew with the heartbreaking scene that had unfolded on that fateful day. Severe injuries. Katie's injuries attested to the profound and harrowing aftermath of that tragic moment. The single bullet that pierced her face caused life-threatening, severely traumatic injuries that would change the course of her life. The bullet had pierced her mouth and nasal cavity before exiting her skull between her brows, only grazing her brain tissue. Part of her forehead, nose and sinuses, mouth, except for the corners of her lips, and much of her mandible and maxilla, the bones that form the jaws and the front of the face, were lost as a result of the injury. Her eyes were still there, but they were severely damaged. Her story took an unexpected turn despite the unimaginable damage. Stabilizing Katie. The situation was dire when paramedics arrived just minutes after the gunshot. The first responders had served as the first line of defense with their quick actions and calculated interventions. They fought for Katie's life with every heartbeat and breath. The time was ticking, and her life was in danger as paramedics rushed her to the nearest hospital. As medical professionals battled to stabilize her, the first few minutes were a critical dance of life-saving measures. The complexities of Katie's case became clear as they worked tirelessly to keep her alive. Her injuries were unlike anything they had ever seen. Katie was quickly transported to a hospital in Oxford, Mississippi. Because her condition was critical, she was intubated with an endotracheal tube and placed on a ventilator to help her breathe. Her frontal lobe, optic nerve, and pituitary gland had all been harmed as a result of all of this. Her pituitary gland damage caused her hormones and sodium levels to become out of control, which is considered life-threatening. She was basically living on borrowed time. After the immediate crisis had passed, the focus shifted to the monumental task of rehabilitation. The medical team felt that they needed to transfer her. Hence, the decision was made to airlift her via helicopter to a Memphis hospital with a level one trauma center, a critical step in treating her life-threatening injuries. Her parents, Rob and Alicia, rushed to be by her side as soon as they could, but Katie was already in surgery by the time they arrived. This would be the first of more than a dozen surgeries she would have in the coming years. The surgeons who treated her were straightforward, not exaggerating their optimism, but also not painting a picture of doom. The first order of business had been to ensure Katie's survival after any procedure, a task that demanded unwavering dedication from medical professionals and paramedics. Transfer to Cleveland Clinic. The local hospital wasn't just a stopover. It was the starting point for the next stage of her recovery. Recognizing the gravity of Katie's situation, the medical team recognized that she required specialized care that exceeded the capabilities of the local hospital. The news of her unusual case spread like wildfire throughout the medical community. Aside from the immediate need to save her life, her story struck a chord as a potential watershed moment in the field of reconstructive surgery and trauma care. Dr. Bryan, a renowned specialist known for taking on difficult medical scenarios, played an important role in Katie's journey. He took a keen interest in her case, recognizing the multifaceted nature of her injuries. The discussion shifted to the importance of transferring Katie to a facility with cutting-edge technology and specialists. This pivotal decision paved the way for the Cleveland Clinic, 
which was founded in 1921 by doctors inspired by the military model of teamwork among specialists used during World War I. Katie's trip to Cleveland marked a significant turning point in her life. Katie's primary plastic surgeon was Brian Gastman, Maryland, a specialist in head, neck, skin, and high-risk soft tissue cancers who specializes in tumor removal and reconstruction. Katie's life had been saved against all odds in Memphis, Tennessee. However, doctors there had attempted to cover the gaping wound with a tissue graft from her abdomen, but it had failed. Her face had been ravaged by the gunshot wound and was in much need of a better solution. The relocation to Cleveland Clinic opened up new horizons and opportunities. Katie arrived at the clinic in a critical condition, and there were concerns about whether she would have enough tissue for the extensive reconstructive work. The first encounter with Dr. Gastman was memorable. He was a ball of energy who showed up to their meeting with a 3D image of Katie's head. The immediate goal was to take her out of her critical condition and address the serious health risks she was facing. Katie's brain had essentially been exposed, resulting in seizures and infections. Forget about the face transplant. Her primary concern was her survival. Nonetheless, hope was creeping into her journey. Even before considering the groundbreaking face transplant Katie would eventually undergo, Cleveland Clinic surgeons led by Dr. Gastman were determined to give her a chance at life. They used 3D printing technology to repair the extensive damage. Katie's older sister, Olivia McKay's jaw CT scans were used to create a 3D printed model template for the reconstruction. The collaborative effort of medical professionals transcended traditional boundaries, allowing Katie to see new possibilities. Finding an ultimate solution. A team united by a common purpose forged ahead in the quest to restore Katie Stablefield's life despite the shadows of uncertainty and the weight of profound challenges. The extent of the damage to Katie's face and head was a medical mystery, necessitating solutions that went beyond conventional treatments. Dr. Brian Gastman, who was deeply involved in Katie's case, recognized that her situation was unprecedented, with a one-of-a-kind set of circumstances. The medical world has crossed borders in an era of global communication. Dr. Gastman convened discussions with experts from around the world to find a solution for Katie. The variety of backgrounds and experiences was critical in coming up with potential solutions to her unprecedented injuries. While there were documented cases of traumatic injuries, Katie's situation presented a unique challenge. During these collaborative consultations, a radical idea began to take shape. Facial transplantation, a potential solution that offered hope beyond the confines of traditional medical procedures. Gathering the Dream Team Despite the fact that it was a new field with inherent risks, facial transplantation held the promise of restoring Katie's identity. The journey ahead was complicated, and the surgical team had to overcome numerous obstacles. A groundbreaking facial transplant was more than just an idea. It was a meticulously planned endeavor. It included medical planning, technological readiness, and emotional preparation. The procedure's complexities necessitated a diverse team with a common goal. Katie's family found solace in the medical team's unwavering dedication while going through an emotional roller coaster. Their dedication demonstrated the power of group effort. The desire to see their daughter's face restored was intertwined with the fear of the unknown. It wasn't just about professional excellence when the dream team was put together, it was about passion dedication, and a shared goal of pushing medical science boundaries. Dr. Brian Gastman, the first to assume responsibility for Katie's care, assembled a multidisciplinary team of 15 specialists to address all of her medical concerns. The assembled specialists from various fields poised to play a critical role in the groundbreaking surgery. Neurosurgeons, vascular specialists, anesthesiologists, and others contributed their knowledge resulting in a comprehensive approach to Katie's care. They knew the ultimate goal was a face transplant, but they also knew it would be a long and difficult journey. Katie encountered a plethora of physicians and specialists from various disciplines during her recovery. The team's brainstorming sessions became incubators for innovative ideas during late-night meetings. Differences of opinion were not obstacles, but rather opportunities to find better solutions. Katie's family's hopes were boosted, as they witnessed this unity of purpose. 
The plan for Katie's recovery became clearer with each passing day. In a world dominated by individual pursuits, her journey demonstrated the value of teamwork. The challenges ahead were formidable, but the team's unity was its greatest asset. They had set out on a journey that promised to rewrite medical history in order to give Katie a second chance at life. While the road ahead was fraught with uncertainty, it also held the promise of a groundbreaking surgery that could change Katie's life forever. Every aspect of Katie's well-being was considered, from immunology to psychology, not just the physical reconstruction, but also the psychological and emotional aspects. Rob and Alicia, her parents, kept a running list of the many professionals involved in her care. It included nutritionists, social workers, dentists, and neurosurgeons. Katie's journey benefited from each person's unique expertise and insights. Dr. Kaufman, a psychologist who had counseled all three Cleveland Clinic face transplant patients, played an important role in Katie's preparation. She started working a year before the surgery and continued for another year afterwards. Her job was to guide patients through the psychological aspects of a life-altering procedure. She gently questioned Katie to ensure that this was truly what she desired. Katie's unwavering determination was revealed during a touching conversation with Dr. Kaufman. In November 2015, Katie signed the consent forms for facial transplant surgery. Her journey had been marked by the collaborative efforts of a diverse and committed team. The road ahead would be difficult, but they were steadfast in their determination to assist Katie in reclaiming her life. It would be another 18 months before she was physically and mentally prepared to begin the search for a suitable donor. Finding a donor. Katie's facial transplant preparations were nothing short of a monumental undertaking. Finding the ideal donor was critical from a medical standpoint. The medical team, led by Dr. Brian Gastman and Dr. Frank Pape, meticulously sifted through numerous medical histories and genetic profiles to find the best match for Katie. Katie's search for a suitable donor was a complicated and difficult process. Her small stature and young age limited the number of potential donors. Furthermore, the majority of available donors were male, limiting the options even further. On top of this, the donor's other organs could be given to patients with more serious illnesses, potentially taking precedence over a face transplant. During an interview, Dr. Gastman expressed his main concern, emphasizing the importance of finding the right donor, one who would be the best match for Katie. The months leading up to the surgery were filled with excitement and meticulous planning. Katie's name was added to the waiting list for a face transplant in March 2016. Fourteen months later, a donor was discovered in Adria Schneider, a 31-year-old woman who died of a drug overdose. Katie received the call for a potential donor three years after she arrived in Cleveland. The road to a new face was complicated further by the requirement for extensive psychological testing to ensure that Katie was not only a suitable candidate for a face transplant, but also ready to embrace this life-changing opportunity. A brief pause while we bring you our subscribers' pick. Here's an image depicting the contrasting pre- and post-injury images of Katie's face. You almost wouldn't believe this is the same person. The image would make you think it would be impossible to fix such injuries. And that's what shows what a remarkable achievement the doctors made, especially upon seeing her post-transplant face, allowing her to live as much of a normal life as possible. With such rapid technological advancement, who knows what the future holds for various kinds of transplants? What is the most unique medical miracle you know of? Let us know in the comments below. Preparation for Surgery Just a few days before the surgery, Katie and her family underwent a comprehensive series of psychological assessments and counseling sessions to ensure they were mentally prepared for the life-changing surgery. No detail was overlooked by the medical team. They delved into the surgical technology, discussing, simulating, and rehearsing each step. They were able to visualize each stage of this complex procedure and anticipate potential challenges thanks to the use of innovative holographic technology. To ensure that the consent process was thorough and complete, legal and ethical parameters were again examined. The hospital was buzzing with activity in the weeks leading up to the surgery. Specialized surgical instruments were carefully sourced, and a strict sterilization protocol was implemented. 
The operating room had been meticulously prepared to house a team of 11 expert surgeons, each at the pinnacle of their respective fields. The face transplant team had already performed numerous practice surgeries in the months leading up to the surgery, utilizing cutting-edge technology such as HoloLens. This self-contained mixed-reality computer headset enabled the team to see holograms of 3D images of Katie's head, essentially giving them a platform to virtually rehearse and fine-tune various aspects of the surgery before entering the operating room. The decision-making process was characterized by rigorous discussions, respectful debates, and careful consideration of risks and benefits. As Dr. Gastman pointed out, each face transplant is unique and complicated, necessitating careful consideration of potential risk factors. Throughout Katie's preparatory reconstruction surgeries, the surgical team made certain that potential blood vessels that could be used during the transplant were protected. The overarching goal of face transplantation drove this meticulous approach, which promised not only facial reconstruction, but more importantly, a chance for Katie to regain a life of improved quality and function. Dr. Frank Pape, a well-known dermatologist and plastic surgeon, was instrumental in Katie's case. His amazing techniques, dedication to excellence, and unwavering commitment to advancing medical science made him an indispensable team member. Dr. Pape was tasked with the incredibly difficult task of reconstructing what had been shattered, utilizing an advanced 3D imaging and simulation tools to chart a course forward. Boundaries were pushed, and the art of medicine was elevated to a science thanks to his expertise. Dr. Pape navigated not only the medical complexities of his role, but also the emotional challenges. He looked into the eyes of a young woman who had been through so much, and promised a transformation despite the grave dangers. Every step of Katie's medical journey bears his imprint, from selecting the appropriate tissue types for transplantation to developing new suturing techniques that reduce scarring. Plastic surgery is about restoring form and function, with function taking precedence, says Dr. Pape. Katie's life had been marked by severely compromised function and form prior to the face transplant. Her only option for truly transforming her life was a face transplant. Katie, her family, and the entire medical team reflected deeply the night before the groundbreaking surgery. It was time to think about the huge step they were about to take. As each person realized they were on the verge of medical history, they were filled with hope, anxiety, and unwavering determination. Day of the Surgery the day of the surgery arrived with a unique mix of emotions, anxiety, hope, and silent prayers. It was May 4, 2017 when the 31-hour-long surgery began, involving not only the surgical team but also a slew of specialists and remarkable technology, including virtual reality. The hospital corridors buzzed with excitement, each passing second emphasizing the gravity of the hours ahead. This day represented the culmination of countless sleepless nights fervent hopes, and a desperate yearning to see their daughter smile again. As noon approached, the surgical team gathered, each member mentally rehearsing their role in the upcoming procedure. The only sounds in the room were the sterile sounds of surgical instruments being meticulously prepared, which broke the atmosphere of concentration. As conductor of this intricate symphony, Dr. Brian Cashman held a final briefing a moment of unity and shared purpose before embarking on this extraordinary journey. Outside, family and friends kept a silent vigil, their hands clasped in prayer, their eyes frequently welling up with tears. Every heart in the hospital, from the dedicated nurses to the administrative staff, hoped silently for Katie's successful surgery and recovery. The face rested on a surgical tray in the operating room, eyes vacant, mouth agape, almost as if in awe. The face had been removed 16 hours before, and this was a moment of profound transition. As doctors, residents, and nurses looked on in respectful silence, the hushed operating room was filled with awe. This transformative moment was captured on film. The bloodless face became paler by the second, resembling a 19th century death mask. Dr. Frank Pape, a seasoned plastic surgeon, gently picked up the tray and carried it into operating room 20, where Katie Stubblefield was waiting. 
Her transplant was one of the most extensive to date, making her a permanent participant in the ongoing research of this experimental surgery, the surgical procedure. The surgical procedure began with precision and coordination, much like a carefully choreographed ballet. The first incisions signaled the start of an intricate coordination in which the room was filled with concentrated energy and resolute determination. Monitors beeped in time with Katie's vital signs, a constant reminder of the delicate balance of life in such complicated surgeries. The complexities of the facial transplant necessitated meticulous teamwork. Vascular surgeons connected blood vessels meticulously, neurologists monitored nerve responses, and plastic surgeons sculpted the donor's face to fit its new host. The intensity of the surgery remained constant as the hours passed. Every challenge was met with collaborative brainstorming and creative solutions. The final sutures reflected the surgical team's dedication and skill. A collective sigh of relief filled the room as stable vital signs flashed on the monitors. The procedure, which was ambitious in its complexity, was completed successfully. Dr. Pape and Gastman left the surgical suite several times during the 31-hour procedure, armed with photos from the procedure, to consult with Rob and Alicia. Dr. Pape emphasized their readiness, even though they were aware that the surgical plan might need to be modified. During the procedure, they switched to option B, which increased the risks while improving both the form and function of Katie's face. Rob and Alicia were critical in weighing options and making decisions while keeping Katie's aesthetic preferences and the associated surgical risks in mind. The surgery eventually replaced 100% of Katie's facial tissue with that of the donor, extending from mid-scalp down to her jaw and neckline. Furthermore, the donor's bone now made up two-thirds of her lower jaw, upper jaw, and the area beneath her orbital floors. One of the most difficult aspects of the surgery was ensuring that her blood vessels remained functional and efficiently transported blood throughout her body. Post-op recovery. Katie embarked on a remarkable journey of recovery and adaptation following her transformative facial transplant surgery. She regained vital functions like breathing, chewing, swallowing, and expressing emotions more effectively after 17 surgeries at the Cleveland Clinic. These surgeries not only restored her physical abilities, but also had a significant impact on her overall well-being, including improvements in her physiological, psychological, and social well-being. Dr. Pape considers the surgery a success one year later, with no signs of rejection or immunosuppressive drug side effects. Continuous medical fine-tuning, including improved speech, ensured a faster recovery. Behind Katie's medical success story, however, is the unwavering support of her parents, siblings, and extended family. Their resilience during the emotional trauma was critical, and they played an important role in Katie's healing process. Katie expressed her heartfelt appreciation to the hospital, the medical team, her donor, and her family. Her statement was filled with gratitude for the care she received, as well as appreciation for the incredible gift of life that she had been given. Without her family, medical professionals, and the donor's family, she wouldn't be where she is now. A new beginning. Despite the fact that Katie's journey is still ongoing, her path to recovery is filled with hope and a brighter future. She may face obstacles like vision loss and additional surgeries to improve her tongue and jaw function, but her determination is unwavering. Katie is learning Braille, demonstrating her determination to adapt and move forward in her life. She intends to go to college online and hopes to become a counselor or teacher while also raising awareness about suicide and suicide prevention. Katie's family wishes for her to be happy and enjoy life. Katie's journey offers hope to many as she works towards independence and a new phase of life. She considers life to be precious and beautiful, and she wishes to make a positive difference in society. Her story exemplifies resilience, strength, and the extraordinary human capacity to overcome adversity. Legacy and Hope Katie Stubblefield's legacy extends beyond her own life, leaving an indelible mark on medical science, ethics, and the human spirit. Her story has broadened the scope of facial transplantation, establishing new standards for medical procedures, ethical considerations, and post-operative care. Her case is regarded as groundbreaking by the medical community 
with her team of doctors being recognized as pioneers in the field. Katie's most important legacy, aside from her contributions to medical science, is one of hope. Her journey is an inspiring story of resilience, demonstrating the human spirit's unwavering ability to thrive even in the face of enormous challenges. She has given a voice to countless people facing life-altering challenges through her advocacy work and public appearances, offering them a story that emphasizes not just survival, but also flourishing. Katie's parents have also become advocates, providing emotional and psychological support alongside medical professionals and families facing similar challenges. Her story displays the resilience of the human spirit and the transformative power of hope, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to inspire. Many people who have faced such difficulties have found hope, healing, and support by reaching out to others. Friends, family, and mental health professionals are all available to listen, understand, and help. There are numerous treatments and therapies that can significantly improve one's mental health. It is critical to remember that feelings of despair can be fleeting and that with the right support, people can recover and lead fulfilling lives. If you or someone you know is in pain, please seek help and keep in mind that there are alternatives to despair. Thanks for watching. See you in our next video.